you have this vision as an athlete, especially when you get to the highest level, the best of the best players, you have this vision of how it should work out and what you see, and it never works out like that. And when you think it's gonna happen this year, it doesn't happen really for like three years. Being in that void area, that time where nothing's happening, I think that's the toughest part. I was afraid that I didn't fit in at all. I was always going to practice or sitting in a gym all day and sometimes you feel like you don't fit in somewhere, like you're left out. I wasn't sure exactly where it would take me. I did it purely out of the love of the game. The hardest age for me was probably around like 14, 15. Sometimes it's hard when you're a kid to speak up and say like, this is happening or this isn't healthy. Basketball is my purpose, but I always say that you need to find a purpose within basketball because you can get lost in that quickly. I felt that my whole identity is basketball and when it doesn't go well, it's like, who am I? It's easy to get your self-worth and your self-love attached to how you perform on the court. You have to be able to find a deeper reason and a deeper love for yourself. If you don't love yourself, it's gonna be tough to make it in such a high level. After COVID, it was kind of a point in my career where I didn't know who I was and I didn't see myself or what everybody else saw me as. The biggest sacrifice that I had to make to get this level is to have the awareness that I can get so much better and be able to understand, hey, I'm not good at this. I remember when I first got to the league, the scout was like, just make her put the ball on the ground. All she has to do is dribble and she can't do anything. And at first I was like, yeah, right, that's not true. And I realized I'm not in good enough shape to go and get to the rim and get fouled, get back up and play defense. and. I can't dribble well enough to go in in there and score, and I don't have that confidence in myself. So instead of saying that's not true, I went to the gym every single day while I was overseas and I practiced driving to the basket. I didn't take jump shots for like seven straight games one time on purpose. Instead of being defensive and thinking, no, they just, they're haters, I'm better and better. Understand that they've exposed a weakness. I let them teach me rather than me be defensive and go back at them. When I first got to the league, people didn't think I was good. They didn't think I was gonna stick. They thought I would just be there for a year and probably get cut. The hardest times for me in my career was when I didn't play at all. I went from playing 15 minutes, being a role player, to not even getting in the game. You're either going to go and keep working and keep working until it comes around, or you're going to give in and just be one of the players that doesn't get in. And I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to settle for that. If that was what I ended up being, that was my journey, OK. But I didn't want to give in before I tried as hard as I could. If I had known what I know now about meditation and breath work and connecting to yourself on a deeper level, I feel like maybe I would have been able to handle my emotions better when I was younger. I still struggle to control my emotions on the court. I want things to work out how I saw them. Sometimes I need to take a seat and calm down, but I've done better with being able to connect to my breath and reel it back in rather than have to reflect on it after the game. Your real strength is consciousness and awareness. Being able to recognize your flaws and recognize who you are and understand that everything's just a projection of you. And it's so hard to be where your feet are and practice stillness and understand that the universe is trying to show you something right now. That's the real strength rather than responding with aggression and frustration. People pass by opportunities, waiting and letting external factors invalidate themselves. I felt undervalued a lot. I always felt like I was selfless on teams and I would take back seats and sacrifice so that we could win. I always thought that that would be valued, that people would see that. It took a long time for me to understand that I wasn't seeing that in myself, so nobody else was. It's hard to come back and realize it's always on you. It's always you, it's always about you. It's never anybody else.